let me tell you where we're heading. The heart of the matter is your core desired feelings over and over again. Your core desired feelings are how you want to feel most of the time, your preferred states of being. Your core desired feelings are life affirming feelings. They're positive, they're expansive. Your core desired feelings are qualities of the heart. They're expressions of love and vitality in their various forms. Your core desired feelings move you towards your highest self, joy, inclusivity, and generosity. There are four parts to the desire mapping process. Part one, discovering your core desired feelings. Two, clarifying with your core desired feelings. Three, then we get into planning with your core desired feelings. And then four, this is the best part, and this is where I packed in so much new juice, living your core desired feelings, because none of this matters if you're not living it. We've got a whole suite, a sweet suite of support tools to help you move toward more positive feelings. There's prayers, there's the practice for returning to your heart, there's a visualization process. Yeah, it's all about getting back to how you want to feel when you're not feeling the way you want to. There's five life areas. There's livelihood and lifestyle, body and wellness, creativity and learning, relationships and society, essence and spirituality. You, your inner self. So that's the how of desire mapping. Here's the why. I said it before, reflection, heart-centered living, self-agency, that all leads to presence. Presence always leads to joy. Joy will always want to create connection. Connection always is of service. I'm really interested in this, helping us to be of more service. Desire mapping is about heart-centered living. In the Kabbalah, the desire for spirituality is referred to as the point in the heart. It's like a drop of desire that's yearning for supreme attainment for the creator. That's desire. In traditional Chinese medicine, the heart is referred to, I love this, as the king of happiness. We might want to call it the queen of happiness. It's believed that the heart center houses the whole spirit, that the unconditional love of the universe, the support that life wants to give you, can only be received through the heart, never through the mind. Biblically, uh, St. Matthew put it this way, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Science is finally catching up with what mystics have been teaching for a long time, since language came to be, that the heart has its own nervous system. So cardiologists call it the brain within the heart. Now science used to assume that the brain was in charge of the heart, that the head called the shots. But guess what? It's not so. Any wide awake, feminine oriented creature knows this. When scientists measure the signals that the brain sends to the heart, the heart does not always do what the brain directs it to do. That's called passion. And this is actually, scientifically speaking, a very big deal. So there's new research in. This comes from Dr. Mark Hyman with respect to HeartMath Institute. Here we go, from Mark also a commune course creator. There's big news in the field of heart health, and it's not what you expect. Um, for so long, the heart has been viewed as the organ that functions by order of the brain, right? Everybody has thought that the head calls the shots, simply by pumping blood through the body, as it's told. An article from the Psychiatric Times reveals much more on the physiology of how the heart and brain interact. The heart actually sends more information to the nervous system than the brain. That's right, folks. The heart sends more signals to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. These signals have profound effects on brain function, mental clarity, and even emotions. This revolutionary understanding of the heart-brain connection is called heart math. The HeartMath Institute has been doing such beautiful, relevant research on the heart-brain connection for many years. All respect. Last thing, by shifting rhythms of the heart, we can shift the brain. Huh? Core desired feelings, your feelings affect how you think and perceive, how you think and perceive affects your behavior and your actions. 
boom. So the brain obeys the heart, it must, but the heart does not have to obey the brain. Oh, I love it. Shamanic cultures believe that we have three brains. There's the gut brain, the heart brain, and the head brain. And any wise shaman will tell you that we spend way too much time in the head brain. We're out of balance and it's being reflected in every area of society. Our heart is where the wisdom is. You're going to hear me say this a number of times in this desire mapping program. Feelings inform our thoughts. Thoughts inform our actions and behavior. Feelings, thoughts, actions. You change any one of those aspects and you could change everything. But everything gets back to feelings. So it's best to start in the heart, the true power center. So let's just stay with the science just a little minute longer. This is really important to take in. I think maybe this is more important than the theory of relativity, which I totally do not understand, but I understand how the heart works. The strongest force field that your body emits, your waves, it actually does not come from brain waves. It comes from heart waves. This discovery comes from those beautiful researchers at Heart Math Institute. So listen, the heart generates the largest electromagnetic field in our body. Our electromagnetic field is made up of actual measurable energy waves, electric and magnetic components. So we're always emitting a signal. It's kind of, it's like we're cell phones, but we're much better for the atmosphere. So I think if we're all emitting more positive, harmonious signals, more cohesive signals, then we will change the atmosphere itself. So to visualize this, imagine that you're standing in the center of a giant donut. It's, it's as big as you are. It's all electric and it's glowing. It's like you're in this magic inner tube. Um, now, by the way, technically that shape is called a torus, T-O-R-U-S. It's a revolving three-dimensional circle. That is your electric magnetic field. And the greatest charge that you emit is coming from the heart. So dig this. The electric magnetic field of the heart is about 5,000 times stronger than what your brain emits. 5,000 times stronger than the head. The heart's field not only saturates every cell in your physical body, but it radiates out from each of us up to 10 feet away. Now, I think if you could measure the presence of a high spiritual practitioner, of a guru or someone who's been you know, really in deep meditation for a long time, I think it could go way beyond 10 feet, but for average humans. The device that measures your electromagnetic field is actually called a magnetometer, a magnetometer. So it means that a magnetic personality is like a totally legit thing. So let me land this home. A feeling is much stronger than a thought. Apparently 5,000 times stronger, possibly. Creating our lives, our worlds, starts with a feeling, which comes from the heart. So when we turn to our heart's wisdom for guidance, we are becoming deliberate and intentional creators. But then when we choose the feelings that we want to cultivate, then we are becoming super creators. We tune into the energy field of our hearts. It's like our heart radio. And then we fine tune. We set the dial to our core desired feelings and we go right there right where we want to go, right where we put our attention. And this is attunement. This is elegance. This is mindfulness. This is heartfulness. This is what it means to be creative, as in creating our reality with our feelings. Feelings are magnetic. Each feeling is a beacon that is attracting a reality. Love attracts love. And generosity elicits more abundance. Anger, anger is legit, but anger might create more things that can make you even angrier if you let them. We know this, what we focus on expands. So choosing to focus on your core desired feelings is a sure way to create the experience that you desire. Desire mapping is about intentional creation and self-agency. Your feelings shape your perspective, what you think. Your thinking directs your behavior, how you show up for yourself and the world. Feel, perceive, act. So here's an example, 
of how a positive feeling might play out. You feel enthusiasm. So if you're feeling enthusiasm, then your perspective, your thinking is very likely optimistic. You're in possibility thinking. And then your behavior is probably what we would call eager, willing, energized, passionate, enthusiasm. I feel it. I'm open-minded. I become passionate in my actions. Here's an example of a negative feeling outcome. Let's say we feel fear. I feel fear, so then my thinking is anxious. I become doubtful, pessimistic. Then with that thinking, my behavior, my actions, probably irrational, a little bit escapist, impatient, I become aggressive. You get to choose how you feel. And then you get to choose how you shape your reality. So think about those exceptional people. We can all be those exceptional people who can be peaceful even in chaos. You know, we've all got that person in our lives who is generous even when they're broke. Um, they're loving even in the face of oppression. I think a lot about Nelson Mandela and his experience of freedom even while in prison, 27 years, and he still felt sovereignty. That's power. You cannot always choose what happens to you, but you can choose how you feel about it. Gratitude or worry? Compassion or anger? It's a choice. Desire mapping is about presence and clarity. So less proving and more living. Maybe you do not need to make six figures a year or be married by the time you're 30 or be team captain. Maybe you do not actually need to sit in an ashram watching your in-breath and your out-breath. Maybe you don't need a pension when you retire. And maybe all of those things are exactly the things you need to do to feel the way you want to feel. When you get real first about the feelings that you crave, you might surprise yourself with some new choices, some different aspirations. You'll sign up for workshops that you never even considered. You will quit stuff. I, Again, I don't make promises, but I'm going to promise you will quit some things. You could realize you do not need to be vice president to be powerful or to be useful. Maybe all you need to do to feel powerful and useful, legitimate core desired feelings, you just need to volunteer at the youth shelter. Maybe you don't need that award. Maybe you just need to take better care of yourself. Clarity about your true desires is so liberating because you get to stop proving yourself to everyone else, including yourself. Just think about that for a minute. No more proving. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it makes me want to laugh. No more proving. Does that make you feel lighter? Makes me feel lighter. Desire mapping is about growth and joy. They go hand in hand. Core desired feelings are your most preferred states of being. They are life-affirming, positive, expansive feelings. They're the various expressions of love and vitality. They are qualities of the heart. They will pull you in the direction of your higher self. When you face your higher self, you will always experience joy. Desire mapping is about connection and service. Your feelings contribute to the state of the collective. Feelings are energy. Choosing to get back to your heart, to your joy, that's a service to everybody. Desire mapping is a tool for reflection, and that's it really. I would so love for you to identify some core desired feelings and then bring those to life. But if this just gets you, and by this I mean this whole program, if this just gets you to stop and reflect on your life and the lives around you, then we're making progress. Because too many of us are on autopilot. We are fueled by fear. A life of reflection, of looking within and making connection it's the only way we're going to get where we need to go, to inclusivity, to generosity, to joy, all of which takes us to our souls, to one another, to Mother Earth, to deeper consideration. And that's how this works. And that's why I'm glad you're here. This kind of self-witnessing, desire mapping, deserves some self-reverence. So give yourself some space and time to do this. Um, make it important. It will be if you say it is. 
And if life is a bit crazy for you now, like forget about creating a Zen space and being all focused. You can do this on the subway, you can slide it in between meetings, you can write in the car while you're waiting for the kids to get out of school. The sacred shows up when you call on it. So just pace it, your own pace. It's fluid, it's deeply personal. Some of us need to process it over a few weeks. Personally, what I do is I desire map in the spring for my birthday. I like orchids. And I do it at the end of the year. And I usually go through this in a weekend. But the last time I did it, I actually gave myself a month to really work it. And I went deeper into the definition of words. And I just really wanted to land on words that were possibly going to last me for a year or so. You might be able to do this whole thing in one sitting. Maybe just like a quiet afternoon when your head is clear. Or if you're night owl, you do it late at night when you feel most alive. Just breathe through it. You're likely going to want to pause between some of the exercises. Specifically, you might want to take a break after we do part one. That's the discovering your core desired feelings module. So before part one and part two, break. Uh, then there's three and four, visioning, planning, and living your core desired feelings. I feel like the truth of things usually needs some time to come to the surface. So pace, pace. Stay focused, be in the flow. Togetherness can really be a beautiful thing with this. Some people love to do this with a partner or a friend. They have some accountability. Um, sometimes just that shared reflection of being seen and being heard by somebody else can help you get clear on how you really feel and what you really want in life. For others, be me. Um, this is more like a solo expedition and they would not want to have it any other way. This could be really easy. So you don't have to tackle this material. It's more like you're going to do yoga with it. It can be really, well, I hope it's really an energizing experience. It could also make you uncomfortable, sweat a bit. So you might have to grind it out, um, you know, be in the healthy struggle of it. I find that most clarity involves some kind of friction. That's like the, the creative and the creative tension. Give words their power. There's words and there's feelings and there's feeling words and there's words that make you feel. Um, there's feelings that can be captured into words, feelings that are almost impossible to capture into words. The point is that every word is its own universe. You're going to look underneath the definitions. With your core desired feelings, really words have never mattered more. It's a big declaration, but for the, for the sake of this experience, words have never mattered more. Words are really sacred here. And you know that you know the answer. So this isn't a test. There's no right way or wrong way to do an exploration into yourself. This is a reflection. And I think our truth is often just right under the surface. It just takes a really clear intention to evoke it. Practical stuff. The things that you'll need. Dictionary, thesaurus, just dictionary.com, thesaurus.com. Good chocolate dark, easy on the sugar, steady breathing, non-toxic candles. Uh, we have lots of support tools for you. Essentially, we've created our own dictionary of feelings for you. So I've got a really juicy list of positive feelings and also a list not quite as juicy of negative feelings, just so you can have that contrast of experience. And we've also got a thesaurus. Over the years of doing this, we've identified sort of like themes of core desired feelings that most people skew to. So for example, lots of people want to feel light. Within that there's luminosity, there's radiance, et cetera, et cetera. Just dig in, you'll figure it out. All right, so go crush your core desired feelings. I'm kidding, we don't want to crush anything. We're not gonna, there's, I should tell you now before you get into this, there is no hacking in this process. This is yoga. This is flow. This is, it's a lot of compassion. Hey, I'm glad you enjoyed this lesson. We have more lessons on the way. So click the notification bell below so you don't miss our weekly videos. I'll see you there.